the global burden of cancer will double by 2020 and triple by 2030. One in eight American women will get diagnosed with breast cancer. Cancer is the leading cause of death worldwide. Worldwide, over a million women are diagnosed with breast cancer every year. Regardless of color, regardless of nationality, regardless of religion. The cancer journey is universal, especially if you're a woman. It was as if a stealth bomber had come in the middle of the night. Men get breast cancer too. This is a global problem. It's our obligation to educate women, to enlighten them about breast cancer. Worldwide, a woman dies of breast cancer. One a minute. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Having practiced the art and science of breast surgery for well over a decade, I've been involved in counseling and treating many women and indeed men with breast cancer. But nothing prepared me, nothing ladies and gentlemen prepared me until I had to face with breast cancer affected in my own family. My mother was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2002. 2002, I have been to UK along with my husband on a holiday trip to visit my son and daughter-in-law and grandchildren. Suddenly I found that there was something abnormal in my right breast which I conveyed to my son Raghu and they have taken a biopsy which proved to be cancer. Whilst making inquiries for my mother's treatment in India, I realized I actually discovered many startling facts relating to breast health care. I realized that breast surgery is not a subspecialty in this country. There are very few dedicated breast specialists in a country where more than 100,000 new cases are diagnosed each year. The concept of breast centers, which is a proven concept in the West, is still in its infancy in this country. There is very little education aimed at early detection of breast cancer and counseling, which is so much an important component of cancer care, is completely missing from the medical curriculum. The unexpected diagnosis of breast cancer to someone so close to me, coupled with the sudden cognizance of the state of breast health care in this country, became the turning point and defining moment in my life. I realized that dedicating the rest of my professional career to improve the art and science of breast surgery in this country would give me far greater satisfaction than being part of an established healthcare system in the United Kingdom. I returned to India with a vision and a mission and I had four goals to achieve. To establish a specialist breast center, a breast cancer foundation, to reach out to the community and hopefully in my professional lifetime develop breast surgery as a subspecialty in India. There is ample evidence both from published literature and from established models in developed nations such as the United States and United Kingdom that improved outcomes for breast cancer can be achieved if specialists with a declared interest and training manage these patients in comprehensive breast centers. And so I wanted to bring this hugely successful concept to India because it has a proven track record of improving breast cancer outcomes. And after many months of meticulous planning, I conceived, designed and established Kim's Ushalakshmi Center for Breast Diseases, which is the subcontinent's very first freestanding center for breast health. This is a unique setup. This is not called a cancer center. This is not an oncology center. This is a breast health center. As nine out of 10 problems relating to the breast are not cancers, the essential component of this breast health center is to reassure the worried well. In addition, clinical breast examination, breast imaging, image guided biopsy, everything happens not just under one roof, but in one purpose built freestanding center. And moreover, the trained breast specialists, that is people who have obtained training and who practice exclusively breast diseases, manage patients in this center. 
In addition to this, we give a lot of importance to counseling because you can only cure sometimes, you can relieve often, but it's very important to comfort always. All our patients are counseled well. This is a fundamental aspect, as I mentioned earlier, which is missing from the medical curriculum. But we make sure that all our patients are counseled well, whether they have cancer or whether they don't have cancer. Whilst working at Royal Marsden Hospital, the world's oldest cancer center, I recognized, I actually was very fortunate that they were the very first center in United Kingdom to have introduced full field digital mammography system which has revolutionized early detection of breast cancer, particularly impalpable breast cancer. I was very keen to have access to this technology when I returned. I have been able to convince the board of directors of Krishna Institute of Medical Sciences to acquire this digital mammography system. Much as this high-tech equipment is incredibly expensive, the management were very kind to acquire this. And so in December 2007, Krishna Institute of Medical Sciences became the very second center in the country and the very first in South India to have launched the full field digital mammography system which not only is extremely effective, more effective than conventional mammogram in picking up early subtle changes of impalpable breast cancer, but it's also associated with less discomfort, less radiation, and should there be any issue relating to ambiguity in reporting, we could send the image to anywhere across the world through teleradiology. I'm very pleased that since the breast center at Kim's established this digital mammography system in December of 2007, Several centers across the country have recognized the importance of this and now there are many such units across the country. With a mission to empower people about breast awareness and underline the importance of early detection of breast cancer, Usha Lakshmi Breast Cancer Foundation was established in September 2007. The mission statement is empowering women, impacting life. Basically, the foundation has been working with a missionary zeal in this respect. The three fundamental activities of this foundation are counseling, support group, and community outreach. As I said to you, counseling is the most important component of breast health care or any health care in general, and more importantly, cancer care. Usha Lakshmi Breast Cancer Foundation collaborated with Breast Cancer Care UK, which is the single largest breast health care provider in the United Kingdom, to publish booklets on every aspect of breast health, not just breast cancer, every aspect of breast health, which aims to counsel, guide, and educate women and their families in simple, easy to understand language with the aim to provide psychological and emotional assistance to survivors and their families and equally help them, rehabilitate them and take them through the journey of breast cancer. A dedicated breast cancer support group was established in February 2009 as an offshoot of this foundation. It is called ASHA, which means hope. And this is led by Ananda Shankar Jayanth, who is a world-renowned, internationally renowned classical dancer a Padma Shri awardee, a breast cancer conqueror, my patient, and a very dear friend of mine. This is the most important aim, community outreach. The foundation has, over the last three years, primed the community and equally spent a lot of time in engaging and empowering the community about the importance of breast awareness and early detection of breast cancer through a number of initiatives. As a general rule, Breast cancer, even in urban India, I am afraid, ladies and gentlemen, is still a taboo. It is a closet issue. It is a topic that is hushed up. It is an issue that is not discussed freely. And that is one of the main reasons why the vast majority of breast cancers in India present in the advanced stage. I recognize the urgent need to break free from this attitude, to break open this closet and make breast cancer a commonly discussed issue, a frequently discussed issue, so that more women will come forward to get routine screening mammograms. We launched the Pink Ribbon Initiative. For those of you who are not aware, Pink Ribbon stands for Breast Cancer Awareness. The Hyderabad Pink Ribbon Initiative was launched in September 2007. And over the last three and a half years, I have left no stone unturned in trying to make breast cancer a frequently, commonly discussed issue. I've addressed close to 300 organizations across the country.
I have contributed articles on breast health in almost every newspaper in Andhra Pradesh. I have frequently appeared on television programs to educate people about breast health issues, not just breast cancer, but breast health issues in general, and basically invited many celebrity survivors, breast cancer survivors, to open up themselves so that the community will get benefit. The very first high-profile visitor to visit Hyderabad was Jeannie Mulford, who is a breast cancer survivor who underwent double mastectomy. She is the wife of the former United States Ambassador to India, Mr. David Mulford. And then came along Marcia Barrett, the lead singer of the legendary pop group Bonnie M. She survived breast cancer twice. She performed live, dancing on the stage in HICC in Hyderabad. We had many celebrities from the film world, notable among them, Pamela Yash Chopra, who is a breast cancer survivor again, who is the wife of the legendary Bollywood producer Yash Chopra, Gautami Tadimala, an eminent South Indian actress, Kamal Hassan, an internationally known actor, and we got, for the first time, I ensured that the foundation organized a program for the very first time in the country, perhaps, where we had breast cancer survivors walk the ramp with celebrities to demonstrate breast cancer treatment. We had many celebrities from all walks of life who had nothing to do with breast cancer, like Mrs. Shaban Azmi, again a very well-known actress, Diana Hayden, former Miss World, Shobha Day, a very eminent novelist and author who gave, who lent support to the Pink Ribbon Movement in Hyderabad. To demonstrate, to salute breast cancer survivors and their families in the fight against breast cancer and to create more awareness, we have conducted two hugely successful walks, the Pink Ribbon Walk in 2009 and in 2010, which was attended by close to 3,000 people. This is something that never ever happened in South India. To strengthen the campaign, the Pink Ribbon campaign, for the first time ever in this country, monuments in Hyderabad like Charminar, Buddha statue were illuminated in pink on the night of the Pink Ribbon Walk. The trailer that you saw at the beginning, One a Minute, is a Hollywood production made by an Indian-born Hollywood actor. This is the largest theatrical production for a cancer-themed film ever made in the history of cinema. The foundation, Usha Lakshmi Breast Cancer Foundation, had the distinct honor of hosting the national premiere. We have been able to host this in Hyderabad, and moving away from the tradition of inviting only celebrities, we had survivors, their families, and breast healthcare professionals attend this national premiere. I recognized that there is uh, one size does not fit all. What I have been able to do in urban India will not apply to rural India. And I wanted the foundation to reach out to the community at large, particularly in rural India, to be able to make a meaningful difference to implement simple, very inexpensive, viable, and most importantly, sustainable breast cancer screening initiatives so that we can translate that to saving more lives in rural India. Although screening mammography has a proven benefit, Less than 5% of women in this country undergo screening mammography. Breast screening by way of mammography, mass screening mammography is not a viable option in this country because of the huge costs, huge variation in mammographic reporting, and the fact that only 13% of our women in this country are over the age of 50 years, where mammographic screening is most beneficial. And therefore, there is ample evidence to suggest circumstantial evidence rather, that clinical breast examination, CBE is clinical breast examination by a trained healthcare worker will help detect breast cancer at an earlier stage. There is currently an ongoing large trial in Mumbai to assess this issue. The advantages are, instead of picking up a tumor at 5 centimeters or 6 centimeters, the clinical breast examination, if it's performed by a healthcare worker in the community, then you can pick it up earlier. Not only that, this is the, an excellent way for the healthcare worker because she relates a lot to the community in rural India. She would be able to educate the women in rural India about breast awareness. So the government of Andhra Pradesh has partnered with Usha Lakshmi Breast Cancer Foundation at initiating this project as a pilot project in two districts of Andhra Pradesh. 
through audio visual aids and booklets and the healthcare workers who are trained will go into the community and do the clinical breast examination. If an abnormality is found, they are referred to the district health officers. If there is no abnormality, the healthcare worker comes back in two years and does this clinical breast examination. If it works in these two districts, I am sure this will be replicated throughout Andhra Pradesh. My final goal is to establish breast surgery as a subspecialty in India. Breast surgery is a recognized subspecialty of general surgery abroad with structured training for breast surgeons. The concept of organ-based breast specialist has now been firmly established world over. There are many dedicated breast surgical societies like the American Society of Breast Surgeons for instance which is the world's largest breast surgical society that has paved way to establish breast surgery as a subspecialty in that country. My proposal to establish the Association of Breast Surgeons of India was seconded by surgeons practicing breast surgery from across the country and this association is now fully functional since March of this year. The association which is the voice of breast surgery in India represents general surgeons, surgical oncologists and plastic surgeons treating patients with breast disease and the association certainly will endeavor to develop breast surgery as a distinct subspecialty in this country. The Royal College of Surgeons of England, one of the oldest surgical colleges in the world, have been identifying leading overseas surgeons who have made innovative changes and contribute uh, articles to their journal. And the July issue concentrates on breast health care in India and I've been extremely fortunate to have been invited by the college to contribute this article which has appeared in the bulletin of the Royal College of Surgeons of England. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to state that the concept of breast centers has revolutionized breast health care in the world. The foundation, through a number of unique and innovative awareness programs, has reached out to the urban population, but we now look forward to reaching out to rural Andhra Pradesh because there is an Indian solution to Indian problems. We can't apply everything everywhere. The Association of Breast Surgeons of India will certainly be a first step towards establishing breast surgery and I hope in my professional lifetime like to see breast surgery becoming a subspecialty in this country. I would like to salute my parents, my family and my teachers because of whom I am able to stand before you this afternoon. From where I became a doctor, qualified to become a doctor precisely 20 years ago, I have come a long way. My mother's setback in the form of breast cancer has been the driving force for me to return to India. I have realized that with focus, determination and hard work, it is possible to make a difference. The Lord's grace has allowed me to set a path, make a humble beginning, to make a meaningful difference to the delivery of breast health care in this country. I would like to thank TEDx for considering me worthy of presenting to you this afternoon. Thank you very much.